Taiwan is at the bleeding edge of this massive movement in AI. We can't even imagine where this growth is going to come from. How are all these technologies going to change the world? My favorite, since it really got me to think about this idea, asteroid mining. Hello, everyone. 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 Kathy, welcome to Taiwan. It's such an honor and privilege to have you here with us. Oh, thank you, Catherine. I'm really happy to be here. Excited to be here with you. Before we dive into the details, let's do a little bit time travel. Imagine it's the year of 2047. It's just an ordinary Tuesday. What's our daily life gonna look like? And all the information and innovation we talked about, how does that gonna translate into everyday life experiences? so interesting even though all we do is focus about the future on the future our investment time horizon is five years although that's the beginning of the on-ramp to 2047 i think maybe that one of the most surprising things that yeah. will happen is the work week will shrink dramatically okay uh, and this is the nature of technology uh, when people were on the farm for example they worked seven days a week, right? Mm. And they had very large families and the children worked for just room and board. Mm -hmm. And then the industrial revolution and we got this idea of a six day work week. And then it shrank to four as, uh, as we were going through, I mean to five as we were going through the industrial revolution. With COVID, we went to remote and many people have remote Fridays now. So maybe we're down to four and a half days. I don't know. Uh, technically, it's still five days in a work week. But the productivity gains that we're going to see during the next 10, 20 years are going to be astounding. Mm -hmm. And this is why the work week will shrink. Uh, productivity gains could drive real GDP growth up into the 7% 7. Yeah. range. Uh, but what would come with that is uh, inflation falling to zero or less. Many people find that concept hard to understand. Yeah. Uh, technologically enabled booms are deflationary yeah. uh, because technology follows learning curves uh, and they become more and more efficient over time. So I think real GDP growth is going to be much faster than anything we've seen. And it's because five major innovation platforms are evolving at the same time. And, uh, and they are converging. So the yes. five platforms are robotics, energy storage, AI, blockchain technology, and then in, in the life science space, multi-omic sequencing. Um, all of these are following deflationary cost curves. Mm. Uh, and, and they are going to become so big that they will move the overall inflation needle because they're moving the overall real GDP growth needle. Uh, I know this is hard for many people to understand because uh, there is a mistaken notion out there that growth causes inflation. And the reason for that, especially now, is what happened after COVID, mm. all of the supply chain problems. Mm. That is not normal. That is abnormal. Real GDP growth, strong growth, usually is accompanied by lower than expected mm, inflation. Uh, so, and then in terms of what our lives are going to be like, well, yeah. we're going to have uh, probably a number of robots accompanying us and helping us do uh, li live our daily life. Um, we see uh, both humanoid robots both in the factory and in the home. Uh, we think that's a $26 trillion opportunity combined. And uh, I think if, you, if I've seen some humanoid robots that uh, uh, have been picking up little pieces of paper, they're yeah. becoming very dexterous, yeah. they'll be able to sew 
That's what uh, Elon Musk is aiming for in terms of the de dexterity. Uh, it's going to be much better than I am. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't put a thread through a needle hole in a while. And I think one of the things that people aren't thinking about is we're not just talking about the physical world in terms of growth. We're talking about the digital world. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, crypto or digital assets. Uh, that's all about moving more into the digital world. That world didn't exist. It did, we know, digital world. But in terms of economic activity uh, mm. native to the digital world, we needed blockchain technology uh, to evolve before that could take place. So the digital world is going to be more and more populated and more um, we're going to see more economic value coming mm -hmm. out of it. And I think people are underestimating space as a source of job creation. too. Yeah. So these are two new worlds uh, that are creating jobs. Uh, if you put into G, uh, chat GBT, yeah. how, are, how are all these technologies going to change the world? What jobs are they going to create? Uh, and, and you say in your prompt, you say, yeah. use futurists, use science fiction, use technologists, use strategists, economists, uh -huh. uh, and use anything else you can find on the internet and, and figure out the kinds of jobs. You will get a list this long. My favorite is asteroid mining. Now, mining? Yeah, who would think about that? Mining yeah. in space. Uh, that's probably going to be a thing. Hmm. Right? Never thought so, of that. No, some yeah. new worlds. And I don't know, the other world we really haven't explored, but we will be able to with these new technologies, is the ocean. You know, these are all new worlds. We, 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 have, not, we have not explored them enough because the technologies have not been there uh, uh, in order for us to exist in other places. Yes. Uh, so that's something I would definitely think about. Um, but in terms of the convergence of these technologies, autonomous mobility, uh, so autonomous cars, robo-taxis, trucks, drones, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to collapse the cost of transportation, transporting people and transporting goods. They're going to collapse the cost. Uh, uh, in fact, we think drones at scale, this is 15, 20 years out from now, which is where you're taking me, <laughs> yes. at, squi at scale, that they will drop the cost of delivery, parcel delivery, mm -hmm. by, we think, 95 to 98% from where it is today, just to give you a sense of the deflationary forces out I there. See. And then the other, the other place I'd like to take you into the future is healthcare. Uh, autonomous mobility is, is, is the uh, application of AI that is going to generate the most revenue the soonest. The most profound application, so that's the biggest, the most profound application of AI is in healthcare. Hmm. Uh, thanks to AI and the convergence among sequencing technologies, artificial intelligence, and CRISPR gene editing, uh, which has evolved because of sequencing, the convergence of those three technologies is already curing disease. Yes. Uh, sickle cell disease, beta thalassemia, already happening. Early, already happening. Now we're looking at CRISPR therapeutics uh, going after the cholesterol lowering market to prevent heart attacks and strokes, uh, which are the biggest killer. So we think uh, diseases are going to be cured and lives will be lengthened mm. uh, in these next 20 to 30 years. Uh, we also think uh, that thanks to just blood tests, uh, we'll be able to detect cancer in stage one or before stage one as the body is setting up. Uh, and again, that's the convergence of sequencing technologies and AI. Uh, sequencing technologies, just to give you a sense of yeah. the drama here, uh, in our genomes, there are 35 to 40 trillion cells, and we can, we can now sequence each one of them. Okay. Think about that. AI is... Uh, is is driven by data. The biggest data project in the world 
is the human body yeah. and the human being and healthcare. Uh, and so we think early diagnosis of disease, curing disease once we find it, and then uh, drug discovery and uh, development. We think the time and cost is going to be is going to collapse, mm -hmm. and we are going into a world of personalized medicine, which was a concept from the tech and telecom bubble. Yes, uh, we were not ready back then. Just to give you a sense of how not ready we were, back in the early two thousands. It took 13 years of computing power and $2.7 billion to sequence one person's genome. What about now? We went in a little more than 20 years from $2.7 billion to $200. Wow. Wow. That's, That's what I mean by deflationary. Ah. And we went from 13 years of computing power to an hour. I see. And we're all going to, as, our, as we age, we're going to get our genomes sequenced every year now that it's so cheap. Why? Because as we age, uh, our bodies mutate. We see mutations. And those are the earliest stage of disease. They're the earliest manifestation of disease. Uh, so uh, wouldn't it be nice to identify the mutation from year to year, yeah, right? What has mutated this year? And then use CRISPR gene editing. Oh, well, let's e edit that programming error in our genome. So really extending life. Uh, and I think the other thing, and, and this is maybe nearer term, uh, I think the productivity gains are going to shock people. Okay. That's how we get to uh, but that's also really important for people to know. It is the companies that harness these AI tools and other forms of uh, automation that are going to win. Yes. AI is going to create a lot of winner-take-most opportunities. I just described two. Mm. Uh, one is five different platforms. Yes, and yeah. the, pl the platforms converging yeah. is what is causing we think the explosive growth out in the future. Yeah. I don't know how many of your viewers are in the investment world, but in our world, then the working assumption is, okay, if a company is growing very quickly now, just give it a few years, it's gonna slow down to the GDP growth rate. So that's reversion to the mean. Yeah. Exponential growth is growing at a rapid rate for a very long period of time. Nobody in the late 90s believed that Amazon would grow its revenue base on average 25% per year for yeah. 20 to 25 years. Yeah. Now we're moving into super exponential growth, meaning growth that is rapid and is going to accelerate because of this convergence among technologies I just described. In technology, there's something called the S-curve, Yes. So it starts out slowly, then all at once. Yes. Well, each one of these platforms is submitting to an S-curve, and now they're starting to feed each other. And that's why we're probably going to see surprising acceleration in growth, as opposed to this reversion to the mean world. Yes. Thank you for painting us for a 2047 picture. But here in 2025, we still have a lot of debate whether we're moving too quickly towards that direction, right? One hand, you hear uh, White House AI crypto star David Sachs saying, oh, AGI fear, they're overhyped. On yeah. the other hand, Bill Gates says, uh, knowledge workers, your job could be replaced within the decade. I'm a little bit concerned. So yeah. I guess my question is, how, how do you distinguish now from short-term hyped from a long-term inflection point that you've said? Yes, uh, there will be displacement of jobs, but the history of technology is that it's a net job creator. Uh, we can't imagine, as I was talking before, there are new worlds yeah. being created out there, new Different kinds jobs. of jobs. And AI is going to empower individuals. Uh, the cost of innovation is collapsing. AI training costs are dropping 75% per year. AI inference costs are dropping 85 to 
we're hearing recently, 98% per year. These are huge deflationary forces. Uh, and so uh, we think there's, that there's going to be huge opportunity for people to create businesses. You know, I think today, I mean, if you were around in the late 80s, early 90s, as I was, uh, when developers were developing for the internet, mm -hmm. they could not imagine any kinds of jobs like Airbnb or Uber New economy. or influencers or influencers, right? You're an influencer. <laughs> they, they, that wasn't a job back then. It would, they, yeah, they there's not a thing. Like that. Right. Okay. So technology is collapsing the cost of innovation even more these days. And so we think a lot more people will be able to think uh, about a dream they've had mm. and go do it. Uh, and I think that's going to be a huge source of job creation uh, and, and great satisfaction, by the way. I, starting my own company, founding my own company in yes. 2014, I had no idea how much fun it was going to be. Now, it was harrowing at times. Uh, you know, we didn't, yeah. we didn't know if we would survive. Of course, that's what happens in any startup mm -hmm. and you have to pivot and pivot and all of that. Yeah. Uh, but... To start your own business, there's just nothing like it. Yeah. You, you yourself once said uh, you think AI could probably drive about a third industrial revolution. You compare it to yes. steam power, to the finding of the electricity. Um, I guess my question is, it's interesting that you're here in Taiwan. Yes. Because I guess none of this could happen without hardware right. and chips. Without right? a doubt. Right? Just last year, 2024, a Bloomberg documentary, a reporter said in a quote, no Taiwan, no AI. Yeah, it actually centered um, how crucial role Taiwan is in powering all AI revolution. Without a doubt. And you're going to say on the ground too. I guess outside of Taiwan, no one will know a lot about COAS. But here, taxi drivers, right. auntie yes. on the market, they yes. know one or two things about COAS. Yes. Well, after all, that in NVIDIA, most advanced AI chips manufacture here. Yes. yes. With, with much of the cooling, testing, packaging yes. done here. here. So I guess my question is, do you think the U.S. or global investors, they are recognized this, this weight in this story or the market is um, underestimated? I think that uh, I think people do understand because of NVIDIA, right? And NVIDIA highlighting how important Taiwan Semi has been to its own success yeah. and to the success of AI, period. You once said ARC is good at uh, finding the inflection point before the market is priced in, right? Um, using the methodology like um, S-curve that you say, yes. Rice Law. Yes. I guess if you put that lens to Taiwan beyond TSMC, what else, um, like cooling system or packaging, uh, could be the next wave hidden champion, in your opinion? Well, uh, we, now I don't know if this is the next champion, uh, but we're fascinated uh, we're fascinated with anything that Taiwan Semi is focused on because it's one of the most efficient manufacturing companies in the world. And I even think that Elon Musk, who considers himself uh, a manufacturer of factories, has taken a leaf from Taiwan Semi's uh, book mm -hmm. in terms of optimization, factory optimization. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I would just say we always look at the suppliers that Taiwan Semi is choosing, no matter whether they're in Taiwan or outside Taiwan. Mm. And, you know, we say, OK, there's got to be something special there because Taiwan is at the bleeding edge of this massive movement in AI. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you, Thank you for Catherine. sharing with us your vision. Um, your presence here says this country just isn't just a link to the global supply chain, but it's also a key driver oh, for absolutely. disruptive innovation. Thank absolutely. you so much. Yes, thank you, Catherine.